politics is a very interesting game. On Tuesday last week, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta was supposed to hold a meeting with Raila Amolo Odinga, Kalonzo Musyoka, Charity Ngilu, Musalia Mdavadi, and Moses Wetangula at State House in Nairobi. That meeting did not take place because Raila Amolo Odinga was sick and was admitted at the Nairobi Hospital. But most political pundits believe very strongly that Raila Odinga actually sabotaged that meeting. He sabotaged that meeting because of the previous meeting or the last meeting which took place at State House. During that last meeting, Gideon Moy was allowed to read the statement in which President Ruru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga and the other party leaders thanked the county's assemblies for passing the Building Bridges Initiative Bill. And from the body language, Raila Odinga was not happy during that meeting. And the pandits also further be believed that Raila Odinga didn't want the other guys to take credit for the Building Bridges Initiative process, a process he's been carrying its burden for a very long time. And that the president was now trying to bring these guys on the table to share the success of the Building Bridges Initiative process. So a meeting was convened last week and it aborted because Raila Odinga was unwell. And yesterday, President Uru Muge Kenyatta chaired another meeting. But this time round, it was an online meeting. And it was attended by the same people. So in this video today, I want us to look at the inside story about this particular meeting which was held via Zoom online. But before we do that, if you're watching this video for the first time, please take a second or two and click the subscribe button. And by the way, it is raining outside here, but I hope you will be able to hear whatever I'm trying to say. Now let us get back to business and I want to go straight to an update over the meeting which took place yesterday by State House in Nairobi. The State House is saying consultative meeting of political party leaders Tuesday 16th. This morning His Excellency the President chaired a virtual consultative meeting of political party leaders featuring the leadership of Jubilee Party, ODM, ANC, Kanu, Ford Kenya, NAC, and Wiper Democratic Movement. The meeting was convened as a follow-up to the one held on 25th. That's the one I was talking about, the last meeting I was talking about. 25th of uh, February 2021 to review the surge of COVID infections across our nation. The meeting considered the ev ev evolution of COVID disease within our borders. And now listen, because it's important also to listen to the resolutions of the meeting, because I strongly believe that whatever was discussed in this particular meeting might not have been necessarily this. So they, it's saying that number one, noted with concern that COVID infections were increasing at an alarming rate. Noted that hospital beds, especially ICU beds, were filling up in both public and private hospitals. Urged Kenyans to remain on high alert to exercise extreme caution and be aware of COVID reality and to do their utmost to observe government protocols. Number four, supported the ongoing national vaccination program which is being undertaken in accordance with the guidelines of WHO and the Ministry of Health. And lastly, number five, argued all, urged all political players to take the lead in observation of the COVID protocol, of which I totally agree. COVID is real. And by the way, I lost an uncle, Commissioner Mark Uko Oyo. The burial is on Saturday. So COVID is real. And they are concluding in light of the above, urged all their political affiliates and supporters, especially in Machakos, to find a peaceful, amicable, and uniting way forward during the upcoming by-election. So politically speaking, the last statement is the only political statement that the president urged the rest of the political leaders to support the WEPA candidate. But why do you think this meeting the president convened? Why do you think it was convened? And why do you think Raila Odinga tried to sabotage the last meeting? Or why do you think Raila Odinga was not very happy with the previous meeting? 
For those who missed that video, I think I did a comprehensive video here and I'm going to share the link. Why Raila Odinga was not very happy during that particular meeting. In my considered opinion, and based on my own observation, I strongly believe that President Uru Muge Kenyatta is trying to achieve several political objectives with this group. The first objective which the president wants to do is to create regional leaders. Let's face it, President Uru Kenyatta is keen on creating regional leaders. In Western Kenya, the president is creating Musalia Mudavadi and is also creating Moses Wetangula. In Ukambani, the president is creating, already Kalonzo Musioka is there, but he's strengthening Kalonzo Musioka by bringing on board Charity Ngilu. Charity Ngilu today is supporting Kalonzo Musioka. And again, in uh, yesterday's meeting, the president also brought on board the Mandeleo Chap Chap party leader, Governor Alfred Mutua. And Alfred Mutua finally decided to, to withdraw their candidate in support of Kalonzo Musioka's candidature. So basically, that's that's uh, Ukambani. Don't be surprised that in the near future, we'll start seeing people like Amazon King being brought on board to represent the coastal region. Relo Dinga is already on this other side. So basically, in my considered opinion, President Ruru Kenyatta is creating regional kingpins ahead of 2022 general election. So that ultimately, when he will decide to pursue his political interest, or to support his candidate for 2022, something is going to happen. The president might decide to even force Raila Molo Dinga to support one of these guys. Or he can bulldoze some of these guys to support Raila Amolo Dinga in 2022. So the president is creating these regional kingpins. Once they are created, then the president can now then decide who to support and how they are going to do it. And that's why in Matungu, ODM party are crying fall because the system wanted to elevate the status of Musalia Mudavadi. So that's number one. Number two, I think the president is also crafting a political alliance for 2022 to tame William Samoy Ruto. Now let me just go through, let me just read, read for you a piece of uh, an article which appeared on the Daily Nation today because I share the exact thoughts. The Daily Nation is saying Speaking to the Daily Nation, Ngilu, they are quoting Ngilu, Ngilu has stated that the meeting was an avenue for them to agree that they were facing common enemy who is Ruto. So basically they are trying to contain William Samoy Ruto. So it's continuing to counter the influence of the DP and his Hustler Nation narrative. Ngilu has also has revealed that they have now agreed to form a coalition that will stop Ruto once and for all. So basically, this the president is keen on stopping his deputy. But the only problem is that for the deputy to be stopped, it means all these other guys must speak with one voice. Because if they don't speak with one voice, they are going to split the votes. And the president, in my considered opinion, is not ready for these votes to split. So he's bringing them together. Relo Dinga refused to attend the last meeting, but again, today, he was there online, attending this particular meeting. Ngilu is continuing, I mean, the article is continuing, she has also stated that they will now form a broader coalition ahead of 2022 general election. Now we are arriving at what I was saying, and this is why Relo Dinga is so concerned. A broader would mean that we are going to bring someone from the coast. If that person is going to be Kingi, fine. If he's going to be Joho, fine. But this guy is going to be elevated to be the regional kingpin of that particular region. <laughs> Politics is very, very interesting. And it's not ending there. This comes at a time Machakos governor Alfred Motua has withdrawn his candidacy from the Machakos by election in what seems to be part of Uhuru's discussion during the meeting. So basically the truth of the matter is that President Ru Kenyatta is crafting an alliance, specifically to tame William Samuel Ruto. Raila Odinga, if you ask me, is not comfortable with this alliance because new groups are being brought on board. So when, for example, they will be sitting somewhere and they are told, who are you going to support for 2022? I don't think majority of them, I don't think Ch Ngilu, I mean Ngilu will support Raila Odinga, but I don't think uh, Kalonzo, Musioka, I mean Kalonzo Musioka, 
Salim Davadi and Moses Dangula are going to support Raila Odinga. Probably they are going to agree or to support a different person. Number three is about the Building Bridges Initiative campaigns. The truth of the matter is that the Building Bridges Initiative campaigns is going to be President Uhuru Kenyatta's do and die campaign. The president will have to ensure that BBI goes through because if it will fail, then the impact on President Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy is going to be huge. The president has assured his supporters that he wants to leave a united country and that united country can only be left through the Building Bridges Initiative process. So in my considered opinion, these guys also met here to discuss how they are going to deal with the issue of the Building Bridges Initiative campaigns, the propaganda ag against it, and how President Ruki Kenyatta's move, like the latest move on uh, fuel, is going to impact on BBI. Number four, I also strongly believe that the President is bringing all these guys as part of Handshake version 2. <laughs> These guys are being told how to run government. Otherwise, why would President Ruki Kenyatta call party leaders to talk about COVID? Riley is not in government. Gilu is not in government. Alonso is not in government. Musalem Davadi is not in government. Their people are not in government. COVID is a, is a national thing. Why can't President Ruki Kenyatta let it be run by professionals? It's, it's bringing on the party leaders in, in it just to prove one thing, just to want them to believe, just to make them believe that they are part and parcel of this government. And lastly, I think they also meant to discuss the impact of the cost of fuel. It is very funny that in this country, the cost of fuel is just too much. If a barrel is being sold at zero cents in um, wherever in the Middle East, your government will still sell it to you per liter at uh, 54,000. So that 54,000 is a two tax. So it means even today when the bill, uh, when the cost of fuel is uh, 122, if you remove, uh, how many, how many, if you remove uh, 45, or is it 52, then the rest is now just profit for these guys. So probably because of the impact, how people have taken the issue of, uh, well, they met and discussed how best they can approach it. Because if they don't approach it so well, I can assure you, it's going to be so bad for the president and the team. I don't know what you think. But in my considered opinion, President Ruru Kenyatta met with these guys just to discuss politics. COVID, in my considered opinion, is, is just a mask the government is giving us outside there. I don't know what you think. And again, if you're watching this video for the first time, please take a second or two, click subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. And for those who are meeting me for the first time, I am Lema Queen. What we do on this channel is simple. We analyze politics in the simplest way, where you, which you cannot find in any other place. So the best thing you can do is just to click the subscribe button now. Just click subscribe button now so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you that you've produced a video. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day.